Vancouver has officially become the most expensive city to rent in in the entire country. Rent in the city of Vancouver has increased 23% alone in the last year. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee Anderson and I sell real estate in the Langley and Fraser Valley area. And if you guys are enjoying my content, I do ask that you hit that like and subscribe button so that I can help grow this community and get my information out to more people like you who might be wondering what's going on in the local Fraser Valley market market. For the third straight consecutive month, the number of sales in the Fraser Valley has decreased. And we're all hearing about things cooling off, the interest rates are going up, and just overall level of buyer uncertainty. But there's one story that I don't think is getting enough attention, and that's the rental market. In today's video, I am going to share with you some articles that I found that help explain why rents are so high in Vancouver and the Fraser Valley areas, as well as share some opinions that I have that also may be attributing to the high rents that we're seeing in today's market. Vancouver and the Fraser Valley rental market is the hottest I've ever seen. And I found an interesting article I'm going to share with you from the Vancouver Sun that goes over in more details what cities in the country are being affected the most. Vancouver rents have jumped 23% since last year. We can see over here, Vancouver is the number one most expensive city. The middle provinces seem to be quite controlled. And then when we move over to Toronto in the Ontario area, you can see again, rents jump. So what's behind this massive of rent increase that we've been seeing dramatically happen over the past two years. There's a few factors that I think have attributed to higher rents. The first one being that the government implemented a two-year rent freeze during the pandemic. Now you might be thinking, well, wouldn't capping the allowable rent increase per year help control the rent prices? And the answer is I guess sort of, but not really from a landlord point of view. And I'll go into that in more detail once I pull up this chart and go over the rental increases that we have seen in BC over the last few years. A landlord can no longer increase the rent on a tenant just because it's under fair market. This is just in BC, by the way. Every province has their own guidelines and set of rules set out for their tenancy act. So when you start a tenancy, a landlord and tenant agree on a fair market rent value. And from that time forward, you can only only increase the rent by the allocated percentage for that given year one time. So if you're a landlord today and it has been more than 12 months of your tenancy agreement, that landlord can only increase the rent by 1.5%. And you'll notice that the year 2021 isn't in the equation. And that's because during the pandemic, the government implemented a rent freeze. Now I understand that some tenants did lose their job and may have been unable to make their rent payments and or struggled to meet their rent needs without having employment. That said, on the other side of the coin, there were some landlords that also lost their jobs and were struggling to make mortgage payments on their end. We also have to account for inflation. Because inflation is as high as it's been since 1983, for landlords not to be able to increase rent at all for two years was definitely a challenge. I'm not trying to favor one party or another. I'm simply trying to put the facts forward to help us understand why we have seen such an increase in rental rates over the past two years. But my point is, is that when landlords are limited to the amount of rent they can increase their units by each year and inflation keeps going up, you can't be totally surprised that some landlords were thinking about selling in the last two years, especially when housing prices were as high as they were. Because I personally had clients that were investors sell their homes to cash out a lot of the times the new buyer was the actual owner. And it's situations like that where another rental unit has been eliminated from the equation. We have less rental unit supply, therefore the rental market demand increases, causing the rent prices to follow suit. So we've talked about how the rising housing prices over the past two years specifically has affected landlords, but I also wanna talk about the effect that that's had on tenants who were first time home buyers trying to enter the market. When housing prices increase your down payment increases, property transfer tax increases, and just the overall environment of the home buying market over the past few years must have been very daunting for a first time home buyer. And in some situations, you know, first time home buyers just step back and said, hey, I'm not comfortable buying a house with 
without even subject to financing. Maybe I'm going to sit on the sidelines, see what happens, and try to get in when things cool down. Therefore, that tenant stays a tenant and increases the demand for rental units. And again, this goes back to my whole point. Like, this is hurting first-time home buyers, people trying to get into the market. Because people that are already in the market that were trying to upside had equity to work with. But when you're starting from ground zero, it is definitely hard, and I really feel for those tenants. A third factor I think has attributed to higher rents is that people were starting new tenancies over the past two years during the pandemic. Tenants that were already in a rental agreement that wanted to upsize because they wanted more space for that home office, they had a second child, what have you, they were having to break their current lease and start a new one. And like we talked about, when you start a new rental from ground zero, you are now going to pay fair market rent. Whereas before in your previous rental unit, you could have been there for five plus years and now the rent you were paying is way lower than you would be paying at today's rent. That's like on Friends, how the hell did Monica afford that apartment? It's kind of similar to what we can see in BC where you are limited to the increase in the amount of rent you're charging to your tenants. Found an interesting article that goes over each city and how expensive it is to live there throughout the country. To rent a one bedroom home in Vancouver, it's going to cost you $2,239. To rent a two bedroom, it's going to cost you just over $3,000. What I found interesting was when we look at the two bedroom options for rentals throughout the country, Three of the five top cities are in BC. Victoria, Burnaby, and Vancouver are all in the top five most expensive cities to live in the country. I don't mean to be negative in this video whatsoever. I just wanted to shine some light on the rental market because we all talk about the real estate market and we've seen how much that's gone up over the past few years. But what we didn't notice, or at least I didn't notice, was how much the rental market has been affected by the growing price points. For it to go up 23% in one year is astronomical and I really feel for people that were trying to save up and unfortunately because how much housing has gone up have been unable to save for that down payment and I really think it's a big issue. I just really want to know what you guys are thinking and what you guys are feeling because rents are getting expensive, rates are going up, food's expensive, gas is expensive and I don't foresee anything getting cheaper anytime soon. Thanks again for watching and as always if you guys do want to book a consultation with me I've got a Calendly link below where you can book a call with me whether it's to chat about buying real estate, selling real estate, investing in real estate or just the real estate market in general I'm always happy to chat and answer any of the questions that you might be having. Thanks again for tuning in and I will talk to you guys soon.